Yeah, we're running. All right. Class. Listen up. So, yeah, it's not gonna work. we're studying how cells reproduce. And when a cell gets big enough, we already learned this. No. When a cell gets big enough, it has to multiply. Ten points, if you can tell me, on a sheet of paper, why a cell can't just get bigger and bigger and bigger. There's a reason that we study uh, that chapter. Yeah, why can't a cell just grow larger and larger and larger? There's a reason. Just put it face down on the podium. Why can't a cell just get bigger and bigger? This should be the shakiest video. There was a specific reason that we studied. What what happened? Oh. Hello. 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 Purple, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Wait, we got it right? Peach got it right? White, not right, not wrong. Blue, not right, not wrong. Green, correct. Purple got it right, green got it right. Orange got it right. Peach, blue, and white, not right or wrong. Here's the reason. When a cell gets too big, its surface area is not enough to feed all of its volume. We call that the surface area to volume ratio problem, which some of y'all put as the answer there. Wait, did White get it right? White did not. White put it takes up too much surface area, which isn't correct. Yeah, I know. It, it, uh... It, it, it doesn't have enough surface area. It's not that there's too much surface area, it's that there's not enough surface area. So it needs, a, it needs more surface area. So the way to get more surface area is to cut yourself in two. And now you've got a lot more surface compared to the volume. So what the cell will do is the first thing it has to do is it has to copy its DNA. And this takes us back to the cell cycle. Remember the phases of the cell cycle. It starts with G1, and then it goes to S, and then it goes to G2, and then it goes to M, and then it goes to C. Y'all remember this from the cell cycle? We just had a test over it. What was G0? G0 was a resting phase. G1 is when the cell grows and grows and grows and gets real big. At that time, it could, it could rest and go to G0. So G1 was a growth phase. Ten points if you can tell me what S stood for. What did S stand for? Ten points. You and your partners. What is S phase? Uh, Y'all know? Peach, correct. Uh, green incorrect. I have it. It's on the top of my Anyone? Purple, correct. Anyone else? Bro, this video might be a little shaky because it stands all broken. Oh, really? It'll work though. Blue, correct. Anyone else? Going. Going. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. White is incorrect. Copy is Yeah, Okay, so the S phase is the synthesis phase where the cell is copying its DNA. And we need to learn about the DNA of the cell. Listen, DNA sits in the nucleus. 
And DNA is a very long molecule. It's like a string. We have some DNA models up here that people made. But these are only small segments of DNA. That's a good one there. These are all good. This is just a small segment of the DNA. If you actually looked at the DNA, it'd be very, very long. And it's almost like a string. Let's pretend this is a DNA molecule. I'm going to hold one side here. <laughs> DNA is a real long molecule, so it's like a long string. Wow. And it lays there in the nucleus in pieces. There's one piece. You know how many pieces of DNA are in the nucleus? A lot. It depends on the species, but in a human cell, there are 46 pieces. Each piece is known as a chromosome. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have 46 chromosomes in a cell. So there's one piece. Here you go. Hold that. Here's two pieces. We're going to have 46 pieces. I'm not going to go to all the trouble of cutting out 46 pieces. You but you could imagine if there were 46 pieces of string in this room, it'd be like the room is the nucleus and the string are the chromosomes. And a human cell has 46 chromosomes. But every species is different. Chimpanzees have 48. Uh, dogs, I think, have 52 or something like that. A fly has only four chromosomes. It depends on the organism. Okay? Why do dogs have more? I don't. It, it's, it's, that's a good question. It depends on how they evolved. And uh, it, the, the uh, formation of chromosomes happened over millions and millions of years. So every species has their own number, and how it got that number kind of depends upon its history. Um, so the DNA is laying in the nucleus as chromosomes. So I'll draw a few of them here. I'm not going to draw them all. One, two, three, four, five. I'll draw six of them. And during the S phase... Of the cell cycle, y'all pay attention. This, by the way, is the essay on the next test. So you want to pay attention here. The S phase of the cell cycle is when the cell copies its DNA. So if there were six chromosomes here in the nucleus, you would see six copies being made. One, two, three, four, five... Six, and, and our cells have 46, so we would make 46 copies. Before the cell divides, you got to make your copies. Why do you want to make a copy? So you, can, so you can make two cells. So you can make two cells. One copy goes to one cell, and the other copy goes to the other cell. That's how the cells divide. they got to copy all their information first. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I mean... Did y'all feel? There's 46 to start with. And then it makes... Um, it makes 46 90. copies, so you really have 92. Okay. Now, each chromosome is held together at a spot. There's a point joining the chromosome together so that they'll stay together. We call that thing that joins the chromosomes together the centromere. And by the way, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of words that start with C for this chapter. It's very confusing. You with me, Avery? And um, so I'm going to write them up here on the board. But chromosome is one word, and that's the long strand of DNA. Can you say chromosome? Chromosome. All at the same time? Chromosome. Chromosome is a long strand of DNA in the nucleus. That's what the string represents. And then, the centromere is what joins one chromosome with its copy. And now we don't have chromosomes. You know what we call these? Duplicated chromosomes. Duplicated chromosomes. Duplicated chromosomes are joined together at the centromere. Kobe, you with me up here? Yes, sir. You know, you know what we would call this right here? What are duplicated chromosomes? 
with the two things? This is called a duplicated chromosome. And the two duplicated chromosomes are joined together at the centromere. centromere. Do it, Erica. Yes, question? Um, this is all DNA, right? This is DNA. It's, there's also some proteins in here called histone proteins. The DNA, this is a good, good point right here. The DNA is actually wound around chromosomes. I'm sorry, it's, it's wound around um, proteins. So there are proteins sitting in the, in the nucleus that the DNA kind of wraps around like that. It wraps around these proteins. And here's another one. And it wraps around it like that, you see. So the DNA is actually wrapped around these special proteins. They're called histones. Can you say histone? Histone. And then the DNA is just all laying out in the nucleus during... During interphase, this portion here is called interphase. Do you all remember this? I love drawing those, by the way. Part of, part of the reason I became a teacher was to draw those, because I like drawing them. This is called interphase. Interphase is G1, S, and G2. And that's when the cell's getting ready to divide, but it hasn't divided yet. During interphase, the DNA is just all spread out in the nucleus. Do you all know? You, sh you per should have learned this last chapter. Do you know what DNA, all 10 points if you can tell me, what DNA that's all spread out in the nucleus is called? There's a general term for it. It's DNA and proteins, and it's all spread out in the nucleus. I have a question. See if you know that. Yes, what's your question? For the copy of DNA, or yes. is that wrapped around proteins as well? Yes. Yes, that's a good question. Are they only in the nucleus? They can go all around the cell, correct? No, it's, it's contained in the nucleus. What's it called? DNA and proteins spread out in the nucleus. It just makes the nucleus look kind of kind of dark. No one? Wait. It is. It's a C word. But I don't have a written there. Okay. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Purple, correct. Anyone else? Going? That looks very correct. I feel that really wrong. Green, correct. Anyone else? Hey, pro. Yes. Why do you need to video this class if you've had this class before? Because we didn't video it earlier. Oh, you haven't? It's called chromatin. Can you say chromatin? Chromatin. All at the same time? Chromatin. So chromatin is what we call this DNA when it's all spread out. But what happens is the DNA doesn't stay all spread out. When we get to mitosis, the M phase, when the cell is actually going to divide, mitosis is the division of the nucleus to form two nuclei. That's what mitosis is. And what you're going to see is the DNA that's all spread out. You're going to see it coil up into small bunches called chromosomes still. We still call them chromosomes, but they're all coiled up, and you can see them. You can actually see them under the microscope. And, uh, hold on, and uh, you can see what they look like. Hold on just a second. They look kind of like the big letter X here. The DNA, which was all spread out, gets all coiled up, like it shows in this picture here. Coiled up to form a chromosome. Yeah. <coughs> chromatin? Chromatin is when the DNA is all spread out in the nucleus. It's all just laying out like this, like the string is just laying around in, inside the cell. And what, what would happen if we wanted to, to move this string, what we would do is we would have to coil it up. We would have to wrap it up real tightly so it would be easier to move. This is why you, um, you, uh, you know, if you have fishing line that's laid out in the ocean, you want to reel it in, you put it all together in a small area, and then you can carry it with you a lot easier. And the cell does the same thing with its DNA. If it wants to move the DNA around, it coils it up, 
into a small area and then it can move it. It's easier to take your fishing line with you if it's all rolled up in one thing than it is if it's laying out everywhere. See what I'm saying? Yes? They don't move along the cytoskeleton, do they? Uh, actually, they special cytoskeleton fibers called spindle fibers that I'm going to show you in a minute. Good question. Other questions? You getting wrapped up in the DNA there? You okay? Yeah. All right. Let me show you how the DNA coils up. It's a very cool video. One of the cooler videos you'll ever see in biology. You ready for this? Yeah. Video of the DNA coiling up. So there's your DNA wrapped around proteins. Watch it coil. Wrap that thing up. It wraps up real nicely. This is a computer simulation of how it works. And there's your chromosome. That's cool. Wasn't that cool? What about Y chromosome? Um they're, they're both, they all, they are all shaped like X's, even the Y chromosome. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Y chromosomes are shaped like X's? Yeah, they're all shaped like X's. They call it the Y for a, another reason. Wait a second. Here we go. Let's see that again. So, so what you're looking at, that little line, that's the DNA right there, that string. And remember when I said it wrapped around those histone proteins? That's what, that's what you see. This thing kind of wraps around. There's a protein in the middle there. And you can see it wraps around here, and there's another protein there, and there's another protein there. So if you watch how this thing coils up, it's got many of these coils. This is a single string being very uh, carefully wound up and compacted so it doesn't get tangled into a chromosome and eventually we get to the chromosome. And so it's shaped like an X. So why is it shaped like an X? It's because it has two pieces to it. It has the original piece and then it has the copy. And they're connected together in the middle. How are they connected in the middle? By the centromere. By the centromere. The centromere is where they're connected in the middle. So that's the centromere. And those are the two pieces of DNA kind of laying across one another. And they're all wound up. And you can actually see this under the microscope. We're going to do that in the lab next week. We're going to look at these uh, onion cells under the microscope. And you'll be able to see the chromosomes. They're all coiled up after, uh, after M, in, in M phase. That's when they coil up. So I'm going to replace my drawing here with my DNA models. So I'm going to erase this. What is this called when the DNA is all spread out? Chromatin. Chromatin. And we erase it. And now it coils up into what's called duplicated chromosomes and I've got little models because I'm going to move these models around when I'm showing you how this works hmm. and this is what you're going to have to write about this in your essay next time when's the next test? I don't know, look at those so now how many chromosomes does a human cell have? 42 46. And this cell, I don't have room for 46 magnets up here, so I only have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And why are there two pieces? Why not just have one piece? Because they're double. One's the original, one's the copy. When did we copy them? Synthesis. Synthesis. During S phase, that's when we copy them, which is synthesis. Mm -hmm. Synthesis is correct. Mm -hmm. So, the M phase down here, this stands for mitosis, and it has four parts that you need to know. This mitosis is broken down into four things. 
Pro phase. Meta phase. That's my phase because I'm pro. Pro phase. The meta phase. You should have learned this in middle school. Telephase. Anaphase. These are the phases of mitosis. These are the phases of mitosis. Phase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and then telophase, also known as telophase. Oh my gosh. And you're going to have to write a paragraph when you get this essay on each one of these and draw what the cell looks like during that phase. We had to make a flip book for these. A flip book? I still have it. You still have it. You could use that to study. Okay, so Hubert. What all happens here? Well, during prophase, skip this. During prophase, the chromosomes coil up where you can see them. That's what happens in prophase. It goes from spread out chromatin, it coils up like I showed you in the video, and now you have chromosomes, duplicated chromosomes that you can see in the nucleus. But that's not all that happens. Do y'all remember what these things are called? Electrons. We actually learned them. Ten points if you and your, part, you and your group can tell me. They look like churros. Oh. And they're perpendicular to one another. Ten points? Ten points. The little things that look like churros, we said that they're active in cell division. Purple correct. Blue correct. No, I know. I know. Orange correct. Green correct. Watch what I'm doing on this. Peach correct. White correct. Ooh, look at y'all doing well. Cocoa? Ow. Ow. So, listen up. So these centrosomes, we study, we're studying them now. We talked about them when we did parts of a cell. But they copy themselves so that there's two of them. <coughs> and that was what, one of the things that happened in G2. In G2, the centrosomes duplicated themselves. And in plant cells, there aren't any centrioles, but there's a centrosome. The whole area here is called the centrosome. It's another C word, so we've got to write that down. The centrosome is this whole area, and the two things that look like churros inside, those are called centrioles, and they're only found in animal cells. People get these confused. See all these C, C words? Very easy to confuse. But what happens is these centrosomes, they move to opposite sides of the cell. And they start shooting out spindle fibers. Now spindle fibers are microtubules. They're like the things, like the train tracks that the, that the vesicles move on. And they come shooting out of, of both of the centrosome. It's like Spider-Man shooting a web. It comes shooting out. Do they yeah. use What phase is this? This is all prophase. All of this is prophase of mitosis. Hold on, and one more thing happens that you have to know. The nuclear membrane dissolves. Are you writing this down? This is in your next essay, Lachlan. I know. The nuclear membrane dissolves, and disappears. Question, Joe. Um, is kinesin still used? Kinesin? Just move the... Uh... Um, it, it actually is. It's a... It's a uh, I think it's involved in the movement of the spindle fibers themselves that have a, a ratcheting movement. Okay. And I think kinesin is involved in that, but I'm not. I'm not exactly and the, sure. Yes. Question. What did the um, What did the uh, those shoot the the centriole, the centrosome? What do they shoot out? These These are called spindle fibers. No, it doesn't start with a C. Spindle fibers. They're made of microtubules, which are parts of the cytoskeleton. 
They're like ropes. And they're going to shoot out and they're going to they're going to grab on to the centromere. They shoot out and they attach to the chromosome. And they and they use the chromosome can move on these things. So that all happens in prophase. Do you see how different it is? The cell looks now, it's doesn't look like the cell used to look. You can't identify the cell membrane or anything like that. I'm sorry, the uh, nuclear membrane is gone. The chromosomes, it's not just spread out, they're coiled up, you can see them. This is how it looks under the microscope. You can actually see these little fibers. Is this exciting? Let's go to the next phase, metaphase. Metaphase is real easy. These chromosomes move along the spindle fibers and they line up in the middle of the cell. So you'll see a big line of chromosomes going down the middle. I don't quite have... Ah! Wait, I thought they moved along <laughs> the spindle fibers. They do. They move along the spindle fibers. Then why are they lined up in the middle? Well, the spindle fibers are shooting all the way across. Uh, are they attached? What are they attached to? So these things are all attached to spindle fibers. But if I if I try to if I try to draw that, it's, it's difficult. But if it'll help you to understand, I'll do it. You see what I'm saying? So they move along the spindle fibers till they're all lined up in the middle. Metaphase middle. They both start with M. Isn't that cool? What is the metaphase? Metaphase, they all line up in the middle. Everybody repeat after me. Metaphase middle. Metaphase middle. Metaphase middle. That's easy enough. And then anaphase is the next phase. And that's Anna's phase. In anaphase, the chromosomes split apart in the middle, and they separate, and they move toward opposite sides of the cell. Anaphase, they split and separate, and move toward opposite sides. You can see them coming apart like that. That's anaphase. Yeah. That's anaphase. That's anaphase. They, like that? okay. yeah. they come mean? apart. Everything Why would they split apart? Why not stay together? Because they need to separate. Me. Nobody they wants to stay with me. No. They need to make two cells. That's so you wrote yourself. <laughs> they need to make two cells. Yo, we copied the DNA. We got to distribute it to either side. Oh, separating. Maybe there you go. We're gonna, so we're going to make two cells here. And then the last phase, telophase is kind of the, the opposite of prophase. It's everything backwards. The chromosomes, they follow these spindle fibers all the way back. They're pulled by the spindle fibers, and they go all the way to the edges of the cell. You'll have a bunch on this side. I'm going to erase the spindle fibers so I can do this a little more easily. And these things go way down here. They're pulled along the spindle fibers, and they reach the opposite sides of the cell. And what's going to happen is the spindle fibers are going to disappear because 